Okay, folks, well, welcome to UCAS 101. Uh, this is Sam Sanson with USA Voice and Data. Um, today, uh, this topic is around UCAS, what's driving the UCAS adoption, um, how you can help, uh, how you can um, uh, assess the different providers in the marketplace, uh, who they are, that sort of thing. And then also, we'll uh, give you an, uh, a quick overview of one of our provider solutions that we've had uh, considerable success uh, with in the past, and that's from Jive Communications. Welcome to the Jive team uh, as well, and thank you for uh, for providing that. If uh, during any point in the uh, the web demo today, if there's any questions which come up, I'd love to hear from them. Um, would love to un understand what sort of concerns uh, you guys are each facing as you evaluate UCAS. Uh, for your for your businesses, etc. Okay. So the agenda today: What is UCAS? First of all, we'll give us sort of uh, an overview of what it includes. Uh, who are we, USA Voice and Data, and what makes us the UCAS experts? Um, what insight we've gathered um, into UCAS adoption and the drivers of that adoption? We'll give you a quick overview of on-premise VoIP, which sometimes people, VoIP and UCAS people kind of confuse, and really um, there, there, is a, there is a difference. Um, and then how do you go about evaluating your UCAS solution provider options? We'll then give an intro to Jive, and they'll be giving you a live demo of the Jive uh, UCAS solution and some of its key differentiators. I think today, in particular, we're going to be looking at um, their call routing uh, capability and their dial plan editor, and also we'll be looking at a, a, a latest uh, release of a new video conferencing capability, um, Jive, uh, Jive Room. So that's, uh, that's that should be great. And then finally, we'll wrap up with some takeaways and how you can get started evaluating your UCAS options. So let's begin by just giving you an overview of UCAS. So it's a cloud uh, delivery model offering a variety of communication and collaboration applications and services. As you can see here, you know, it's not just about telephony anymore. It's around presence, who's available right now, who's on the phone, who's out of the office, who's taking a lunch break, so on and so forth. Um, providing messaging between your employees um, and collaboration between your employees. Um, webinars, things like this GoToMeeting that we're using today, uh, online meetings. Uh, how do you interact with your uh, clients and uh, vendors today? Um, uh, if you're only using the phone, would using webinars and screen sharing and online meetings make a difference for the effectiveness of your communications? Um, if so, UCAS is definitely uh, uh, going to be important for you. Similarly, video conferencing. Sorry, one second. Just, here we go. Um, so, in addition, uh, many UCAS vendors are offering contact safety capability, contact center capabilities. So this would include interactive voice response, auto attendance, call routing, integrations with CRMs, lots of the solutions now integrate with all the big CRMs, whether it's whether it's Zendesk or whether it's Salesforce or, or whatever. Um, and they'll also um, yeah. integrate, they have application programming interfaces, which allow you to basically um, interact your phone system with any other uh, any other sort of um, applications that you're using uh, today for your business. Who's USA Voice and Data? We're a leading technology solution advisor and broker. Uh, we, we, um, we basically help businesses evaluate technology solutions, and then we help them actually procure them. Uh, evaluating different providers' solutions side by side in a very objective uh, manner so that they can make uh, an educated uh, decision. Because obviously lots of these technology solutions that we're talking about today, they're new, 
there's a lot of new providers out there uh, that a lot of our clients have never even heard of before. Um, and um, so it's important they they get some support from somebody who uh, basically evaluate these solutions on a daily basis and help procure these solutions on a daily basis. So let's move on to uh, the adoption of UCAS. If we take a look at today's um, IT infrastructure, um, basically there's over, over a trillion dollars of aging communications infrastructure, old phone systems, switches, firewalls, you name it. And at the same time, we've got these different forces which are disrupting IT. Uh, things like the need to support a distributed workforce and provide mobility for for uh, employees, uh, the, um, the the need to in increase um, productivity by integrating uh, your phone system with your um, with your CRMs and so on and so forth and other uh, business uh, business applications, and then finally, from a customer's perspective. Um, a customer wants to be able to communicate you communicate with you in a number of different ways. So uh, you want to be able to like allow them to customize their uh, experience and communicate with you in the manner that they they prefer. Obviously, with lots of uh, millennials and so on and so forth, they would much rather chat and message you than speak to you on the phone and so on and so forth. So. Obviously, we've got like multi-channel, multi-channel capabilities that Unified Communication provides you the ability to offer that to to your uh, your customers. When we take a look at that, it's a over fifty billion dollar um, market opportunity uh, for UCAS Unified Communications as a service and Contact Center as a service. So where are we within the adoption today? Um, so there are a couple of different things I'd like to draw your attention to. Is firstly the uh, this this was back in 2015, so these numbers have crept up considerably. Um, but as you can see, the small businesses were the first to really jump on board and adopt uh, UCAS solutions, followed by the medium-sized businesses, and then obviously the larger businesses and enterprises. However, what you can also see is the growth rates um, in the in these different things is kind of the inverse of those. So what was uh, a bunch of uh, enterprises doing some tire kicking, they were kind of waiting for waiting to make sure that the solutions were as robust as they were ma being made out to, to, to sound and, and letting the small businesses and the medium-sized business work out any any uh, chinks in the armor of these different solutions. But now, when we actually take a look at who's actually adopted UCAS already, um, um, you can see here um, you just got massive organizations who are already on board with UCAS and CCAS adoption. Another another slide of those. So when you take a look at um, this is global business telephony users. You can obviously see the more typical premise-based solutions on the down click and the cloud-based users on the uptick. And what I would say is um, just from our own business, um, with how many businesses we're helping move to cloud UCAS solutions, I'd say that this uh, these lines may be coming together a little quicker than uh, than was originally forecast back in 2015 by Frost and Sullivan here. So with that, let's talk about the different drivers of UCAS. Um, I'm not too sure how many of you folks are still on um, a premise-based phone system, um, but uh, obviously, um, just like a car, uh, they kind of go end of life and then they stop being supported and so on and so forth. And then at the same time, you have your users who want to integrate um, some of their business applications with their phone systems to improve, improve their productivity, right? So that may be another need with the business really driving uh, driving the uh, 
the conversation around adoption of UCAS more, more quickly than the end of life. So you may end up actually having the business say, hey, I know we've probably got another five years on this phone system before we're beginning to really worry about its reliability and support and spare parts and so on and so forth. However, you know, we can see some business productivity gains, which would, which would encourage us to actually adopt those more quickly. Um, thirdly, of course, um, with these UCAS uh, solutions these days, um, one of the great things is you get a, a mobile app for your cell phone so that you can actually make and receive uh, a business call from your phone without having to give away your personal cell phone number. And obviously, for a business, that means um, that even if you as an employee move on to another company, um, people who would have called you would be still calling into your business DID and not your personal DID. So businesses are not losing uh, that business uh, by providing you with a mobile app uh, with a business telephone number. Um, another area is collaboration tools, obviously. Um, I don't know how many of you use Skype or Teams or whatever, um, or collaborating internally. Obviously, the collaboration tools are, are becoming more and more a part of our regular day-to-day -day business, and it's all around productivity. Um, another area, global accessibility. So businesses are moving out of just operating in the United States and then, you know, they need the ability to have a phone system which allows them to potentially four digit dial between their offices in, in New York and London and so on and so forth. Uh, and then finally, of course, after years and years of relying on a VAR uh, to administer phone systems, etc. And now it's everybody's expectations that you can kind of you expect the uh, systems to be designed so well that they're easy for you to administer yourself, even though most UCAS providers uh, offer a fully managed solution where you can just phone in and say, please make this change or make that change or whatever remotely. Um, what you'll see specifically this afternoon in, in the, uh, the Jive uh, demo that we'll see later is the administration is is uh, has been improved so much that you know uh, uh, not even a very technical person can now administer their own their own UCAS phone system. Similarly, on the contacts, and I don't know how many of you folks have a contact or a customer support operation. Uh, they have some different different sorts of drivers. Um, obviously, they're looking at workforce optimization. Uh, they want to make sure. Um, that they have the right people uh, on time and uh, available to answer calls and the volume of calls that they're receiving at different times of the day and having that visibility through the, their solution uh, is really helpful. Um, they want to be able to expand their talent pool by potentially having uh, their, their reps work remotely. Um, they want to offer their Customers, omni-channel support, so not just phone support, but also chat support, fax support, email support, you name it, and it all to become coming in coordinated in a coordinated manner into their contact system. Again, the global presence and obviously customer service. I think we've all seen those credit card commercials where the lady phones in and it's like her twin sister's answering the phone and so on and so forth. So really improving that customer service uh, experience in the contact center is really important. And then finally, you know, uh, even integration with social, social media uh, uh, platforms as well. So let's take a look at the difference between an on-premise VoIP and a, a cloud-based UCAS solution. So when you look at on-premise voice, um, a VoIP, you know, A, it's capitally intensive. You've got to buy the big box uh, as soon as you buy that box, which is sitting in your phone closet, et cetera, it's immediately obsolete. Um, it's just like driving the car and buying a new car. And as soon as you drive it off the forecourt, right, there's a new model coming out and so on and so forth. Um, it's intensive from an IT resource perspective. Um, you don't have any uh, redundancies to, uh, to take care of local disasters. 
Um, you're dealing with multiple vendors. You've got the equipment vendor. You've got the telephone service vendor. And you may have some connectivity vendor as well, right? Um, um, uns it's not very scalable, not very flexible, hard to work with remote workers, so on and so forth. Um, and, and that's, you know, those are the key, key uh, items of an on-premise solution. And when you look at the new way we do business, the first thing is, People are no longer stuck in their offices, right? So they're remote. So, um, with the, with a cloud UCAS solution, first and foremost, there's a zero, zero capital investment. Everything can be, uh, bought as a service. So it's a, a operating cost instead of a, uh, instead of a capital cost. Um, everything's immediately future proof, um, because new, uh, New functions and functionality is, is just immediately rolled out automatically, just like a, if you like, just like a, uh, upgrade, uh, from your, for your, um, firewalls and so on and so forth, right? You know, uh, those upgrades get rolled out and, or your, or your, uh, Microsoft or whatever, right? Those automatically get rolled out. You don't have to schedule a time for your bar to come in and make an upgrade and replace a, replace a board or do something like that everything is immediately available and obviously um all these cloud ucas providers have 24 by 7 support where you can immediately speak to somebody who knows the platform inside out and, and can help you um with any programming or changes that need to make need, that need to uh, take place that you're not comfortable with making yourself um so uh what that means for you, it means you are left more time to focus on your core core business. So, so with that, let's talk about the different um solution providers and their platforms. So when we take a look, certainly within the US, we really have four different groups. Uh we have uh, a Cisco platform group, we have a Microsoft platform group. We have a broad soft platform group, and then we have a bunch of um, solution providers who have, gen who have basically uh, generated their own proprietary platforms. So Cisco, obviously, big name, big VAR. Um, you're very, very used to uh, working with Cisco. Back in the day, it was like no one ever got fired for buying Cisco, right? Uh, but now, um, you know, people are getting... Cisco fatigue and the costs of maintaining those those systems are uh, are pretty astronomic and are rec and recur you know, year after year after year. Um, similarly, Microsoft, you know, with their Office 365 and Teams and so on and so forth, they have a platform for telephony. It's not a fully developed platform, so they rely upon. Um, other providers such as Coltair and Arcadin, to name a couple, who basically layer on the missing components that the Office 365 platform itself doesn't really provide. Um, similarly, Cisco, uh, similarly, Coltair uh, also sells the Cisco HCS um, type uh, phone system. Uh, it's kind of cloud-based, um, but it's not um, it's not as robust as the new Cisco, uh, uh, which is basically based upon the Broadsoft platform. Um, when Cisco buys uh, another platform, it's normally uh, an indication that um, they recognize that their own platform no longer really makes the grade. So a couple of years ago, Cisco made a huge purchase of Broadsoft. And now that's, uh, that is actually, um, Owned, uh, owned and operated by Cisco. And as you can see, there's a lot of leading providers who use that Broadsoft platform already, even before Cisco bought it. A couple of notable names, including Mesogy, Nextiva, uh, Evolve IP, and even Comcast Business now uses it. Um, on the proprietary side, um, there's some very, very big names. Uh, Ring Central, 8x8, Mitel, Vonage, um, and obviously Jive, uh, GoToMeeting, um, log, uh, all owned by LogMeIn. 
um, that's another huge conglomerate which has come together to to provide a um, a full UCAS platform. Um, what's nice about the proprietary or working with the proprietary um, uh, platform uh, providers is they're in charge of their own destiny in terms of they own their own platform. So ideas for improvements to the platform and so on and so forth. They have huge teams of engineers working on those improvements all the time. Uh, so they're not reliant upon Broadsoft's engineers and Cisco's engineers to come, uh, to come up with a, a new release of the Broadsoft platform. They're constantly uh, upgrading their existing platforms and those, uh, those um, functions and new functions and features are being constantly rolled out to folks who have already uh, made the made the jump into into their platforms so when we take a look at our clients you know one of the one of the things we really want to understand is what in order of importance what are their goals for implementing UCAS and it really differs you know you may have some folks that you know they have um, still have PRIs which are quite quite costly um, Maybe some have had recent outages either with their phone system or their phone services. Um, maybe the business is really driving them to uh, do some integration with their line of business applications. Uh, the equipment itself is uh, coming to the end of its maintenance life cycle and there's going to be some significant upgrade fees. Um, or maybe, you know, um, you're dealing with a, a, lots of businesses uh, growing through acquisition and for their internal IT folks, uh, it's really difficult for them to provide a uniform experience for their different, uh, for their different employees and their different offices and business locations because they're all on different platforms. Uh, you know, one would be on a Cisco system, one would be on a Panasonic, one would be on a Shortel, so on and so forth. So very hard to provide a, consistent experience, hard to manage and maintain that. And then obviously hard, hard to provide that sort of four digit dial between the locations and so on and so forth and drive some of the uh, business uh, productivity benefits. The other thing that we are always interested to find out is um, what sort of time frame uh, do they have in place for, uh, for making the switch over? And, you know, we, you know, we sometimes we get hit with a, hey, you know what, we need it at the end of next month. And the other times, you know, people are being a bit more proactive and, you know, it's six to nine months or even 12 months out. Um, but, you know, it's important we understand this because um, because it's such a fast moving environment and because new features and functions are constantly being rolled out before we start evaluating the different providers for our clients as to which solution best fits them. Um, we don't want to do that nine to 12 months out because in nine to 12 months out, you know, there may be a new entrant, there may be some new features, there may be some new pricing and so on and so forth. So it's important we understand when they're looking so that we can start evaluating, okay, when do we start pulling the trigger in our evaluation uh, and pulling together pricing and stuff. Um, here are some other considerations, contract expirations, budgets, productivity. Maybe you've got a new office opening and that's the perfect uh, scenario or you're moving offices. Perfect scenario for making the jump to a UCAS solution. Um, you can get your new solution set up in your new office um, and you don't have to move any old equipment over. And then everything can be up and running and tested and so on and so forth. And then as of the move day, that's the day we'll coordinate to actually get your telephone numbers ported. Um, but that's, that's a great, a great time to be uh, making the jump to a, to, to a new solution. So we have a massive portfolio of UCAS and CCAS solution providers. Um, and this is just a small subsection of them. Obviously, um, there's a, a there's a probably another 
50 uh, other providers that we're that, that we work with um so how do we go about evaluating uh who's a good fit so the first thing we we like to do is send out an interactive quick assessment um this is a real short form it takes about five minutes five to ten minutes for, for you to fill in it tells us a little bit about uh what your environment's like today um you know what's your wide area network set up are you ethernet fiber are you broadband are you mpls so on and so forth how many seats you need do you require a contact center um are you using any of the office 365 do you integrate with any crm do you want integration with crms these sorts of things so this is a short questionnaire again normally takes five to ten minutes once we get that questionnaire filled out where uh we then have a team of engineers that sees you know over the course of uh 12 months they probably the engineers probably see about a thousand different questionnaires come in so what they try and do uh, is basically throw those uh, questionnaires through what they call their swim lanes so the first thing they see if there's any platform preference um is there any international requirements are there any line of business application integrations any existing handsets that want to be reused or can be reused what sort of contact center capabilities are being required and once they've got that we basically have these interactive matrices in the back end where we have all the different providers and what are their strengths and weaknesses and so on and so forth and then that eval that allows those engineers to come back uh, you know within a, within a, a day or two and come back to you with like a, a top two or three providers which they know straight away are going to be a great fit for your particular business's needs uh, with your UCAS solution so really helpful and again you know these guys see thousands of these um, requests so that's why they're able to generate these matrices these matrices if you were trying to generate them yourselves it would probably take it would probably take you nothing six six months to generate something like this and you you know you'd have no time to do your regular job so this is really 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 very helpful and with that um i want to like next hand over to jive and um today we have um i think it's valerie right is it valerie hey valerie Hi, how are you? <laughs> Can everyone see Valerie? Yep. Okay, great. Okay. So um, I'm just going to, um, before we actually get to Valerie, I just want to go through a couple of slides here. Valerie, you want to just push that back, uh, close that back down again, and I'll go through a couple of slides, and then we'll we'll hand over to you. Sounds great. I'm just closing it now. Cool. All right, so um, uh, Jive uh, was a standalone UCAS provider, and then they were acquired by LogMeIn a few, a couple of years ago. I think a couple of years ago. Um, uh, has it been two years, Scott? I think so. Um, anyhow, um, what's super nice about Jive is um, they have really nailed the simplification of the management, and we're going to see a demo of of that um solution uh here today um obviously they own the tech stack themselves and they have all the redundancy that you would expect of a top tier uh ucas provider um the other thing is obviously they've integrated the go to meeting products that log me in is famous for and so on and so forth so what's been awesome for 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 us and our clients is you know for the same cost that most providers uh ucas providers are providing a, a sort of telephony solution um with jive they package in go to meeting so this go to meeting um solution that i'm using today to talk to you all with um, and share my desk with and so on and so forth all of that's potentially included with the jives with the jive seats so that's uh it's really nice uh benefit um can really help productivity and understanding and working with working with your customers and and, and with your suppliers etc as you can see they've got 24 by 7 omni-channel support based here in the united states um 
and um, they do have some of the uh, industry's leading um, customer satisfaction rates. Um, Scott, do you know what those CSAT and MP Net Promoter scores are today? You know, the last one I heard, um, we were up in the mid 60s, which puts us up near Rackspace and Amazon and things like that. So, not just outside of our industry, it is it is leading across across the board. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, typically for a telephony company, Scott, um, you know, what would those Net Promoter scores be? The highest ones that I've seen are in the low 30s. They typically are down in the low 20s and upper teens, uh, as far as that goes. Yeah, yeah. So again, I think you know, I, I think you know, um, that's that's a, a real good indicator of how great that support is. And um, you know, um, obviously, uh, USA Voice and Data. We only work with top tier providers who are providing that level of support for our customers. Um, so um, yeah, definitely, uh, Jive is definitely. Uh, Proven their way with uh, with us for our clients. Um, here, let me just see here. And as I kind of mentioned, um, everything about the Jive solution is all included, uh, all for a single price. So obviously, there's a phenomenal list here of your typical telephony type uh, telephony type. Um, capabilities here but what I've done I've highlighted a couple of th few things with stars and I think that's what we're going to actually see today in the demo um, uh, firstly the dial plan editor which is basically allows you to really lay out how you want your calls to be answered the call flow and so on and so forth secondly go to meeting well we're kind of demoing that as we go um, <laughs> today uh, but also the go to room, which of course uh, Valerie was kind of like demonstrating and is going to go into a few more de uh, uh, a more in depth demo of. And with that, I'm just going to like hand it over to uh, Valerie to take on from here. Great, thank you, Sam. Appreciate that. Quest from you. Oh, sorry. Do I have to uh, change screen? Here we go. Let me just change. Here we go. Okay. You know, while we're while we're waiting for that, let me just let me vouch for USA Voice and Data as well. If if you've selected uh, USA Voice and Data as a as your source for all these types of things, they provide that same type of service as well. So let me let me vouch for Sam and Ross and Angelo and and uh, that entire group as well. Thanks, Scott. I appreciate that. Great, thank you. Okay, so can I, can everyone see uh, Valerie's uh, uh, Jive dashboard here? Yep. Okay, great. All right. Great, thank you. So this is the administration portal for a Jive PBX. So this would be where every all the management for your system and your phones would would happen right through this interface. Um, as you can see, it's it's nice and simple, which makes it so that anyone with any sort of, of background um, in in telephones can come in here and manage it and be able to make quick and simple changes. But what we're really going to focus on, as Sam said, was the dial plan editor, which a lot of people uh, refer to as a call flow. And with that, one of the first things that we're going to make is a schedule. So we're going to jump down there and we're going to go into our open office hours to edit those. Now, as you can see, there are no current open office hours. So to add them, it's really as simple as clicking on the screen into the graph and then pulling down as far as we want those hours to go. So this particular office is going to be open every day from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And we want that Monday through Friday, so we just drag across the screen all the way to Friday, and we click Save, and it's as simple as that to create a schedule for your business. Now with holidays, those can be added. Um, and you can be closed all day. In this instance, we have Thanksgiving coming up uh, here in the US, so we're going to be closed for all of, all of that day. So now that we have that all set up, 
in our schedule, we'll jump over to our dial plans to really build out that cool flow for this company. So this uh, dial plan editor, it's, uh, we've, we've tried to make it very, very simple for you to jump in and use and be able to visualize how the calls are going to run through your system. You can select a template if that's easier for you because um, oftentimes it's like, well, I don't know what I want my calls to do exactly. So we have a few templates to get you started um, and we have a link out to documentation to be able to make that even easier for you. So we're gonna start off with a blank template and the schedule that we just made, we're going to pull that over onto our canvas and choose that open hours schedule for us and connect that up to the start. So now when we're open, we get to decide what we want to happen. And in this particular case, we want it to run through an auto attendant. So that would be when you hear that, that voice go for option one, click like this for option two, um, and so on. So we're gonna have three options for our auto attendant, and we're going to upload that sound clip so that when they go through that auto attendant, they know exactly what they need to press. So for this, our first option is going to have it go to our sales ring group. And a ring group makes it so that it will call everyone all at the same time. So we're gonna have five people in our ring group, and this particular ring group is called sales. So we're just gonna search for that and it will pop up for us. Now in that sales group, you can have as many people as you like, but when calls come through to that group, everyone will receive a phone call at the same time and whoever picks it up first will receive that call. And then if no one is able to pick that up, then we're going to have them leave a voicemail. We'll put that in and connect it up. And that line is all finished. So we'll spread this out so it's a little bit easier to see. And we'll zoom out on our canvas so you can see more of that. And then for option two, we want that to go through to our customer service. So we're going to put in a call queue. And a call queue makes it so that all the callers are kind of queued up waiting to speak to an agent. And this is going to be our customer support queue. Um, if, I, if they've waited for more than 300 seconds, it's going to send them through to a voicemail for that customer service queue. And that's a shared voicemail box so that multiple people can log in and out of that and check those voicemails and respond to them. And we're going to also have it so that they can click star to escape that queue and go straight to leave a voicemail. Make that nice and simple for them. And then similarly, we're going to have a queue for our billing team, which is going to be our third option here. So we'll put in our billing team and then we'll connect them up to their voicemail. So now in the matter of just a few minutes, we've been able to make a dial plan for, <clears throat> for our open hours for this particular business. Now, on our auto attendant, we have a few other options that we can add in. We can allow or disallow extension dialing. So if you have a caller calling into your business and they already know that extension 101 is going to get them to SAM, then they can click 101 during that auto attendant and it will route them right to SAM nice and easily. And then we can just have these on timeout and on invalid. So if they click four and four isn't an option, it will just route them back around to listen to that auto attendant again. And very similarly, we can set something up for when it's closed. And maybe with this business, we just want it to go right to one big voicemail box where everyone that's a shared voicemail box um, or is just going to the receptionist voicemail box. And in this case, that's going to be Sarah. So we can have Sarah answer that. Now, with the holiday we have coming up, we have Thanksgiving coming up, we have recorded a specific sound clip wishing any of our clients who are calling in a happy Thanksgiving and letting them know we'll return their all of their calls on Monday when we're back in the office. We can still have that call go through to Sarah Johnson's voicemail box, but we'll have it play the sound clip first that um, kind of tells them that we're out of the office, we're not going to be back until Monday, and that's when we'll record everything and we hope they have a happy holiday. 
And then that really personalizes that experience when they call in on, um, on a holiday. Yeah, so in just a matter of a few minutes, we've been able to really build out this dial plan for a business that will route all of their calls and make sure that no call is being lost and all the calls are going and routed to the right areas. Now, once we click save, it's all done in real time. So anyone who calls into this business now from the moment we click save will come through this new dial plan. So it's very immediate and it will get you where you need to be instantaneously. So we've built this great dial plan. We want to make sure it's connected to our main phone number. That's pretty simple. It's right in the, the PBX administration portal again. We just go to the phone numbers area and it's, it's as simple as clicking the edit button and making sure it's, that it's routed to the right extension number, which in this case is 1045 for the USA Voice and Data webinar dial plan. Click the check mark there. And now all calls that come into this 385 number are going to go through that dial plan that we've just created. Um, and it's as, as simple as that. Yeah, I think one thing I, you know, uh, most of our clients really love is the visibility into how their calls are actually being routed because way too many phone systems and phone, phone system admin type things, they're hard to visualize what's actually taking place. With this, you can actually see it. You can follow it very much like a flow chart. It's very simple to see and it's very simple to make changes on the fly uh, versus other things which are like, oh, you have to go through a, a, a really convolute, convoluted um, uh, list of instructions to actually make changes, etc. I mean, I can't tell you the number of uh, businesses that we've met with and we ask, how are your calls routed today? And the answer that we'll get will be, you know, I'm not too sure. You'll have to call into our main number and follow all the different prompts to figure out how our calls are being routed. Whereas, you know, uh, Jive customers, they would just literally just bring up this, this dial plan editor and um, it will be very evident exactly how their calls are being routed. And again, hey, guess what? You know, if this was a, uh, you know, a company that acquired other companies and there were, you know, there were three existing companies, one, two, and three, yeah, to press for ABC, press one, for BCD, press two, etc., and they just go and acquire another one. Bingo, go in here, add option four, and to connect with X, Y, Z, uh, press four, and you know, you've got all of that, all of that, uh, flexibility immediately available to you. So really, really, uh, really useful. Uh, I don't know, I, I, I think we have, uh, you know, a couple of our, uh, a couple of our partners on board, Justin and, uh, uh Don, you know, um, in terms of like, ease of maintenance, uh, you know, how have your teams found found this this type of uh, interface compared to what you're used to working with other other providers? Anyone there? Maybe on mute. Well, anyway, um, well, this this is great anyway, Valerie. Um, so, um, yeah, so this is a huge differentiator for Jive. Um, really, really makes their system very understandable, uh, for even a layman. Uh, you know, if, if, you know, lots, lots of businesses, they hand off the phone admin to the receptionist or the office manager and so on and so forth. And they're not always the most technical people in the world. Uh, but you present them with something uh, as easy to administer as this. And um, they're like super confident. Oh yeah, no, this is great. And then of course, if there are some specific requirements that they can't remember how to make a change or whatever, um, all they'd have to do is pick up their uh, their handset Dell six one one, and they'd be directly through to uh, uh, customer support, who would be able to help walk them through, make the changes, or teach them how to make the changes, etc. So. 
Any any questions about the uh, the editor or the ease of use of these systems? All right, Valerie, you're obviously doing an awesome job. Um, <laughs> so so now I suppose uh, would be the appropriate time to let you demo the uh, the new the new solution. Great. So here we go. Okay. All right, so I'm going to turn the camera back on. So hello again. Uh, so with this system, I'm just very quickly going to talk about the hardware components that come with it. So on the table, uh, what I'm pointing to here, and then what you can see on the left side of the screen, is the phone. So this has the full GoToRoom UI. This would be where you would control it. You would turn the camera on and off, mute yourself, join meetings, etc., right from this UI. And then you have the hub right here in the middle. And this doesn't have to be anywhere uh, within the room. I, it doesn't have to be in the room, but it doesn't have to be anywhere visible. So you can have this behind the monitor that you're using or behind the television screen. It just is in the room, so it helps process the video and make uh, that video much better. And then you have the camera piece, which um, can sit generally above the television or as we have it right now, it's on the table. And that has a 4K sensor with a 95 degree bright wide angle lens. So right now I have it in room view where you can see 95 degrees of this room from that camera, which is really nice. So this piece that you see here in front of, in front of me and in front of the camera for you is the only piece that actually needs to be on the table. So it's a nice clean aesthetic for your conference room as well. But when we get into some of these really exciting features is when we turn on to on camera mode. So we'll pop it into people view. And what this will show us is it's going to dynamically read the faces in the room to move around and make sure that they're always within frame for you. And uh, what that's going to do is for you as the viewer, it's going to show you um, only the people that are in the room, so you're not having to get this full view of, of a primarily empty room. You get to zoom in on these faces and really see who's speaking and see what the conference is about. So with that, as you move around the room, it's going to widen itself so that it can fully capture everything, and it's going to then shrink down to be able to get um, an even more zoomed in view. So that's that intelligent int attendee view. And then you'll notice on, on bullet number three, there's a high dynamic range video mapping. And what that does is it enables it so that you have a really bright window. The people in the room are still going to be illuminated and it's not going to shadow them out while you have a really bright, bright background. So for the viewer, it's a much nicer experience within that conference. And then the other video feature we have is called the whiteboard feature. So over here in the room, we have a whiteboard set up and we're gonna draw out a graph and we have great projections for the year and, and lots of good things. Now, typically with a whiteboard in a room, we would be excluding someone who's viewing it on, um, who's viewing it remotely because our conference board is over there and if we were writing just over there, they wouldn't be able to see that, they wouldn't be a part of it. But with that whiteboard framing, what it does is it takes anywhere within that 95 degree range and it can square it up and set it so that you can have that be your whiteboard and the attendees will be able to really see and experience what's happening there and be able to contribute. So for an attendee attending your meeting, it's a it's a brand new experience where they're really a part of that, which is which is really nice. And then with these audio features, that's really where Dolby made their name. So you may recognize Dolby from Dolby Atmos at the movie theaters. It's really kind of the cream of the crop and what, what all audio aspires to be with Dolby. So they have what's called full room pickup, where it takes a map of the entire room and it's going to be able to capture distant voices, quiet voices, voices that are overlapping. So if Scott's talking and I'm talking at the same time. I'll, I'll, spark, I'll speak really softly. And he's speaking quietly and I'm speaking more loudly and someone's really close to the microphone. Then for you as the listener, you're able to distinguish between those voices. 
instead of having them all kind of come together in this jumble and you're like, hold on, hold on, hold on, one person speak at a time, right? We've all kind of been in conferences where everyone's talking over the top of each other and nobody knows what, what anyone is saying. And so this full room pickup um, kind of dispels that and makes that um, not something you have to deal with. So as a listener, you're able to hear out of different parts of the speakers that you're using and be able to distinguish the different voices and the different levels. And then it dynamically levels them so that if someone's speaking really close to the microphone and they're very loud and Scott's being very quiet, I can still hear Scott as a listener outside of the room. So that's uh, one of the places that it really shines. It's a really, um, it's a great new product. It runs through and with GoToMeeting. So when they have the Jive solution and they have GoToMeeting with it, they're able to do full recording and calendar integration through GoToMeeting and really take their conference rooms and their conferencing to the next level. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I apologize. I really do have a face for telephone. So <laughs> all of you for this. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, you know, maybe you can just talk about, you know, uh, can you give us an idea of, um, I mean, typically I know like a, a, a jive seat with a, you know, with a go to meeting, uh, with a go to meeting, um, license, et cetera. We're probably talking in the sort of, um, 20 to $25 range. What do you, what do you, what does the go to room sort of license and, and hardware look like? Can you just give, give folks an idea? I mean, obviously, you know, uh, there's been a, a huge variety of different um, uh, room-based video conferencing capabilities out there in the marketplace from uh, some unbelievably expensive ones uh, and so on and so forth. Can you tell us what this looks like? Yeah, absolutely. So we have um, the Dolby Room Kit that, that you're seeing today. We have a few different purchase options for it. So it's a hardware and a software bundle. And you can you can opt to purchase the hardware outright if you wish. But what we've kind of what we've come out with with Dolby is uh, this room as a service model where it's one hundred and forty nine dollars a month. And that includes your full service with um, with the go to room, go to meeting functionality on it and all the hardware components. And that is fully warrantied um, throughout wow. that full term of 36 months. That's awesome. That's awesome. And um, how, how, do these, how do these rooms work together if you've got multiple rooms working? You know, you got a conference room in New York and you got a conference room in, in, in Chicago and DC and so on and so forth. How does that how does that work? Yep, great question. So with these, um, all of them can be calendared if you're using Google or Office 365. So no matter where you are, you can book the room. Um, many companies they'll have a remote manager, and then their employees are actually in the location. And so the manager will schedule the one on ones, and they'll schedule those with the room, um, so that the employee can go into the room and they can have a nice nice conversation. And that can be done from anywhere with that calendar integration. But they work together in that we can start a meeting on this and have another conference room, maybe the New York office, join into that. And we would both be using the GoTo room and speaking to each other. And so would I see tiles at the top, one for New York, one in D.C., one, you know, like little video tiles? Yeah, so with this, you would, um, it works best if you connect it up to like a television or a large monitor, and then you can project um, and see everything that's being displayed. And you would see a tile for each of uh, similar to what you're seeing now uh, okay. with the meeting. You would see that um, with the okay. go-to room. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then as far as uh, uh, it, the recording, just like all go-to meeting, it's, it's like unlimited recording and so on and so forth. Yes, with the intelligent transcripts as well that are searchable. Absolutely. Oh, that's awesome. I have a question. Um, much like your uh, your Jive seats, uh, I know there was a you know Jive view test for uh, understanding whether or not the network is ready for a Jive phone. 
Is there a jive view test also for this service? And what kind of bandwidth requirements um, are needed to run this uh, new, new room? So with uh, with Jive View, we can actually use Jive View to run and make sure that this is it's set up and ready to do a go to room as well. So we can use something very similar. And then we also offer meeting diagnostics. So on a meeting by meeting basis, you can take a look at the diagnostics from those meetings and really kind of pinpoint, oh, we have an audio issue here, but it's because maybe they were joined via uh, Wi-Fi at Starbucks, or we had some a little bit of latency um, because of this, and then um, you can kind of proactively prepare for the next meeting. So great question with that. And then these are, um, are really compressed, so they use the same amount of bandwidth as a regular go-to meeting, so it's not much at all. Okay, all right. Well, guys, I'm just taking a look at my watch. It's just gone one o'clock and, uh, you know, uh, we had a one hour scheduled here. So, um, I'd like to just quickly just, uh, take, take back and I'm just going to close out with a couple of different slides here. Um, okay. So does everyone see my screen again? Yep. Okay. So, um, thank you. Uh, thank you, one and all. Um, there you go. So, again, I think the key takeaways I'd have you uh, um, write down is like, hey, you know what? Cloud UCAS is the future. Um, you've got all these phone system manufacturers that have gone bankrupt or gone through consolidation and then more recently obviously you had the Cisco purchase of Broadsoft. Those really are uh are approve approving that old phone systems are just irrelevant and nobody's gonna ever be buying an old phone system ever again. Uh they're all moving everyone's moving to the cloud. Uh total cost of ownership really is um less than premise despite the numerous advantages and um, again, with 100% availability um, that the cloud solutions provide you today, um, uh, it, it's the fact that they can hit that TCO while providing that availability is just great. Um, and obviously, we're already in mainstream, and the adoption rates are high already, but increasing more and more. Um, if you want to... Um, if you'd like to like have a conversation about your own specific needs, et cetera, um, do reach out to me. Uh, I can be reached out to at ssansom at usavoicedata.com uh, or you can call me at 312-604-3069 or if you just want to send uh, an email to info at usavoicedata.com, then myself, Ross, and Angelo, one of the three of us will be in contact with you immediately. And then we can actually send you a link to this UCAS quick assessment, uh, uh, which would have you fill in um, and get over to our engineers to help uh, narrow down the search from the 100 different UCAS providers to what we believe which should really be your top two or three uh, to be considering. Uh, and then we'll obviously be working with you and those providers to schedule demos, et cetera. But with that, I'd just like to thank everybody. Um, thank you also to the Jive team for agreeing to uh, uh, sponsor today's webinar, et cetera, and give us that great demo of their new product. Super awesome. Um, we will be reaching out to you, uh, all the attendees. You'll be getting a $10 Starbucks gift card, and there will also be a, a draw. Um, one lucky person is going to get a set of uh, Apple AirPods. So thanks, everybody, uh, and um, I hope you have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. That was awesome.